Have you ever wondered what it would be like if all the Love Island contestants fought to the death a la Hunger Games in order to be crowned winner? Well, I've got the game for you. My name is Colin Mahern, and this is Ministry of Broadcast. So this is a 2D story-driven platformer that reminds me an awful lot of Abe's Odyssey, which is why I, I gravitated towards them. When we get into the gameplay, I'll actually show you, because... At the start, which is what this is, it's quite cutscene heavy. And essentially what it's doing is introducing you to this story where you play as this foxy redhead lad with a lovely, really thick beard a la something like Ant Middleton from SAS Who Dares. And the, the government has, uh, they, they've started this reality TV show where... If you win, I can skip the dialogue because, yeah, I'm explaining all this in a way, uh, where when you win the, the competition, basically, you get to pass over this wall and past the wall, you, that's where your family is and you want to see them again. And that's essentially what this story is. Now, it's a really good premise, but in practice, it, it asks more questions then it answers. However, the writing itself, which I don't know, you may be paying attention to, but I'm talking over an awful lot of it, uh, is it's quite dry humour. And it's, it's for the most part, pretty all right. Now, before we start the trial, we have to go to bed and meet our weird roommate who insists on staying in the top bunk so you know they're a psychopath. Ah, the morning after is when you meet the weird, deadpool -y, fourth wall breaking -y crow. Evil crow, as well as that. See? Stupid little bastard laughing because I've lost my boots. So it, it takes a lot of cues from, yeah, the Hunger Games, uh, George Orwell, my personal favourite, WWE films The Condemned, starring Steve Austin and Wimbledon defender Vinnie Jones. Over here, we have the arena, which is where we will be tested. And as you can see, it's very slow moving, very stiff uh, controls, which is why it does remind me a little bit of Abe's Odyssey or I suppose old school Prince of Persia as well. Jump up, that's it, good lad. Where, uh, I suppose like that, you have to be cautious of, I could probably jump off that, could I? Yeah. Cautious of fall damage, you have to be caught. You've been cautious of pretty much everything, like, and it's very trial and error as well, which the game outlines from the offset. As you can see, hold right trigger to run. Oh, brilliant! I'll do that because if you don't, you fall into the ice and you die. When it's such a story driven thing, and I, I've have this opinion on like uh, horror games as well. Because there are some timed trials as well. You could call them time trials. That, I don't know, the tension really... It disappears when it's just you're repeating over and over and over again. But a lot of these trials do require you to, to figure out the path to glory. Because, you know, the puzzles will change and all that type of stuff. So here, I need to flip the orange switch which will do something. That's exactly what it'll do. It'll open up a door over here that will allow us to progress throughout this little test. Uh, however, our uh, redhead here thinks it's easy, but it's not, as a lad with a gun will come out here and show. So I'm guessing there it taught me that if I create noise, your man will shoot me. So let's just try. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Okay, well we won't do that then. But that bastard crow again! Instead, let- fuck. Yeah, alright. <laughs> Shit. I thought left trigger was a, a sneak or a crouch. Apparently not. You don't need that anyway because the walking is so slow that shouldn't create much noise. And it doesn't. Hooray. Naturally, as you progress, the challenges get a little bit more difficult. 
I could, and I will, for the laugh, try and jump this. There you go. And there he is again! Always, always waiting in the wings. Right. Instead, let us go over here. And we see some other people who are involved in this casting reality show thing. Uh, so, if we jump up here, we can what, they just have a sign that says no. And an arrow pointing left? Not a fan of the blonde to her left, it seems. Anyway, if we pull this, we see that that lad, whose doppelganger has just appeared, uh, fell to his death. So, need to find a way around that. Fuck. Don't you, don't you dare. So the objective here is to lower this little platform. And the reason for that is so that we can help these people uh, get across that gap. However, it's not really to save them. Instead, as the man in the green hoodie will display, or he would if you could see, look I'll go over, he fell to his death. In the spikes. And what that does, he's still alive. That's, that's very unpleasant. So what that does is create a little platform for us. We can walk on him whilst he's still twitching. Hmm. Survival of the fittest. Let's let these people free. One, move on. Then, we can run over here. They'll recare in the world. Thanks, everyone. You've been a massive help. I'd imagine by now you're understanding the premise of the game. It's all these small little puzzles where there is a uh, an overall story. But the story is thin, as I think of... <laughs> Shit. As I think... Hey, hey, hey. Come on, doggy. Get down. Here's your dinner. And that should create... Um, a little ledge or platform for us we send the dog back up to jump across here easy peasy oh shit I think the best idea is just to run in blind panic as outlined there Goal rat, goaling about the place. So I haven't mentioned the art style yet, which I think does deserve a mention. Because whilst many games use pixel art, thus devaluing the uh, the style itself, I think that Ministry of Broadcast uses, its we uses it well. By even creating depth, as you can see there, between the foreground, you, and the background, it creates... I don't know, it just gives it some more life. Oh! I forgot that, lad. Hmm. See, it, 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 I don't know, it, it just becomes a little bit too much trial and error, even as I was saying earlier. Like, the, the, the tension uh, removes itself. So I know the guard is going to come out there, so I get a head start. And fall to my death anyway because I forgot about the rickety platform. And then the crow again. One issue with the art style is that because of its f fucking bastard. <laughs> That's one issue, yeah. Take two. The one issue with the art style is that sometimes it's difficult to decipher what, like there for instance, what was a gap and what was a rickety platform. But I did it flawlessly. Remember when I mentioned about things being timed? Well, this is one of them. Because that big hand is after making it so that this structure is crumbling. That I have to be 
unbelievably quick and I think I've gone the wrong way, haven't I? So after that trial, we go back to bed, but not before we're assessed by this man in a fetching pair of glasses and a hat with the middle cut out, or maybe that's a man who's going bald. I don't know, but it's more story cutscenes. And I think at this stage, you've got an idea of what Ministry of Broadcast is. It's out on Steam now and on Switch. I think it's about 20 quid. And you know, like it's 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 all right. It's it's a decent two D platformer that if you have any reverence for Prince of Persia, Abe's Odyssey, whatever, you will definitely find something here to enjoy, despite its flaws, which are obvious as well. Ministry of Broadcast, okay. All right. If you like this video, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. That would be massively appreciated. Also, there are two other videos off to the side for you to have a look at. Isn't that just wonderful? But most importantly, please subscribe and then hit the bell so you'll be notified of all future uploads and live streams and all that type of stuff. Thank you very much for watching. You are a star.